This one's prettier. Let's look at this one. Oh yeah, that's what it is. You can't see the practice section. Is that what it says? Yeah, there it is. Yay! All right, so you can't see it. I love it. And then I just want to clarify: the numbers right here are in the textbook, including the practice. Yes, cool. And that's what I need you to turn in. You can do it as much other stuff than I assigned for extra practice and stuff too. Yeah. You can just write down your answers. Yeah. yeah. You want the practice and the 44 and all the things. Everything I put on the homework sheet. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. All right. Yes. Do you have to write the question or just the answer? You can just write the answer. Yes, sir. Where it makes sense, you can show me work. Right? Or you have to. If, you know, sometimes you don't. Work doesn't make sense, right? Uh, but most of the time it does. Okay, so let's try some of these problems out. This little section of homework, like I was saying earlier, confuses students, and I don't blame you. So let's do number 42 together. So read through 42. Doesn't sound like it tells us much. Fitness center is interested in the mean amount of time a client exercises in the center each week. So you kind of have to, so it says give examples where appropriate. So I'm going to show you where that would make some sense. Uh, what in the world is the population they are interested in? The, the clients at the fitness center? Yes. And somebody said a really good word over here. All. All clients of the fitness center. You guys with it? <coughs> I like it. So just to really make it distinctive, when you answer a question about population, you might want to use a word like all or every or something. So all clients. So part A for this problem, number 42, would be all clients of the fitness center. Okay. Uh, the sample. Now, you could be very vague and be more like a definition almost, or you could be very specific. So I could say the sample are eight, 87 randomly selected clients. Or I could just say a subgroup of the population of fitness clients. You know, it's up to you. That's where they mean give examples where appropriate. Are you, is everybody still with me? Does the problem say what I just said anywhere? No. But the, the idea of the problem is here's somebody just like we did earlier. Here's somebody interested in something. Tell me what would they do? I mean, that's really what this is asking you. So let's say I say 87 randomly selected clients of the center for part B. What's the parameter? What's parameter mean? What's parameter described? What's a parameter described? Population. I like it. So what is the parameter? The mean amount of time that, how do you make it distinctive? Because the next question is statistic. How do you make sure that I understand, you understand, what a parameter is? The mean amount of time that all clients spend in the center. You see how you use, so whatever you, the hell you said for population, for part A, you're going to use that same phrase in part C. Because what's a parameter described? Population. So whatever the shit you said for part A is the population. I don't know. My thing this year seems to be snapping. I normally don't do that. This is weird. Um, so what's part D going to have to have in it? Probably your answer to part freaking B. Okay. See that? So what did I say? My answer. What did I say? My answer. I said my answer was 87 randomly selected clients. So what would the statistic be? The mean amount of time that the 87 randomly selected clients spent. Do you guys get the feel for this? Or you could say, the mean amount of time that my subgroup of randomly selected, however you decide to say part B, you use those same words in part D. Because what's the statistic do? Describes a freaking sample. You guys get that? So are we putting a number in there for us? If you want to. That's why they say give examples where appropriate. So you could just create a number. 
Or you could just say a subgroup, just to make it a little more vague for the sample. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what's the variable? What's the variable related to? The mean amount of time. The, the question you would ask, right? I'm freaking doing charades up here. <laughs> uh, so what question would you ask a, a client? How much time do you spend exercising? There you go. So what's the variable? The amount of time a client spends exercising. The guys, variable is related to the question you ask. Data is a collection of answers. And data is definitely where you want to give examples. Uh, so what would the data be here? Just make up some things. 16 hours. 16 hours. Zero hours. They're just a member, so you can say, yeah, I'm a member of that gym. How often do you go there? Uh, next question. I never go there. Or people live there. Holy shit. And we go to a gym and you're like, I don't care what time of day I come, I see that person. <laughs> do they live here? Sorry. This freaks me out. Um, does it, you guys get that? You guys try to do number 43 on your own. Can everybody see that? I don't know if they're going to really blow it up anymore. Oh. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So do 43. Now I can't see the top. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, I'm still a little confused on statistics. I know you said it relates to the sample. Yes. So how would I? So like the mean amount of time that the 87 realms of your clients spend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's what I mean by you include that phrase for the sample in your statistic answer because okay. that's what it describes. So for the population for this one, would it be children? Yeah. Uh, the mean age of children take their first ski and so more lessons. Uh, yeah, so. Who are they trying to talk about as a total group? Children. Children that take their first ski. Yeah. Yeah.